India is an ancient civilization rooted in prehistory, a land where no boundaries have existed for seers and sages. India cradles all the major religions of the world with its multicultural destiny. There are 25 million Christians in India, little less than 3% of the total population. And yet, some parts are as densely populated with Christians as Europe or the Americas. But the Christianity as a whole, right, of, right from, the, from the heritage point of view, from the art point of view, I think it's, a, it's quite a powerful religion. Uh, we were more into headhunting. Our traditions uh, are imbibed in uh, Christianity. In fact, uh, it is part and parcel of uh, our own uh, way of living. Christianity believed in purity and now in love. And I don't think and I don't see Hindu or Muslim religions preaching or teaching anything else. If we love God and we love mankind, that's it. We are people of God. But this, I'm born on 2nd October. I'm a Gandhian. So you can imagine the friends I have, and most of them are all non-Catholics. But we at heart are real Indians. We have not given up our Indian culture. We still have retained a lot of our old traditions. One of the things that we as Christian community have experienced that there is full support from the government to run our schools, our charitable institutions, our social work, and uh, whatever dedication uh, to church or work we want to do. And they come here in a very last stage, and the sisters are being, has been take, uh, treating them, taking care of them. And after some time, we are able to find out their families and they go home. But some are absolutely have nobody, and maybe we have to look after them lifelong. See, when I talk to a Hindu or listen to a Hindu, actually I'm listening to God speaking through that person. That is the deepest theology of the religious dialogue in Christianity today. You are, uh, you are uh, that golden temple. Anybody can go there, anybody can worship there. Pri provided you are a creation of God. Job has revealed to me first and foremost that Jesus was an Easterner, not a Westerner. Legend has it that Jesus lived in India. There are many well-researched books establishing that Hazrat Yusasaf of Srinagar, the great Kashmiri saint, and Jesus were one and the same person. Whatever the truth behind these claims, Christianity's links with India were forged early, very early, almost from the dawn of Christianity itself. Aramic was the mother tongue of Jesus Christ. And we consider that this is the language which was spoken by Jesus Christ. That is why we are preserving the language and uh, the music too. Sauna adaye du du karo nai hu moon vabo ho so ka di sha dal hai monu so shara artu mo du orto du kusiya ignati yo sunuronu tevo logosuya mo du ekumo so kuri lo sune bavo haliyo Viya vannisuda bhuku modu dahabo. Indian Christianity has earned respect from the highest quarter. The father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, had much to say on Jesus Christ. I have great respect for Christianity. I have often read the Sermon on the Mount and have gained much from it. I know of no one who has done more for humanity than Jesus. The Christian diaspora in India has many rituals of birth, marriage, and death. To move through Indian Christianity is to move through a kaleidoscope of rituals and ceremonies, weaving through several denominations. Chief among these are the Roman Catholic and the Protestant churches, 
as also the Syrian Christian Churches of Kerala. The Syrian Orthodox Baptism. India has always had a rich heritage of religious expression through song and dance. Intrinsic to the Indian Christian community are dances such as the vigorous Kumbi folk dance of Goa. This is a dance performed during harvesting by the Goan Christians. A warm Indian Christmas and of course not forgetting the evergreen Santa. Indian Christianity has a wide variety of marriage ceremonies. This is the wedding of a shy Syrian Christian bride in Kerala, otherwise known as God's own country. The ceremony is distinctly Indian in that the priest, rather than the groom, presents the ring to the bride. This is the wedding of a radiant Goan bride showing the ceremony's adherence to a traditional Western style. Kerala Christianity, drawing from traditions, also created the Parisamurtukali, a martial dance commemorating the works of saints such as St. Thomas, St. Sebastian and St. George. Christianity in India is as old as Christianity itself. The Indian Christians are the progeny of St. Thomas, the beloved apostle of Christ. St. Thomas is believed to have arrived in India in 52 AD on the shores of Malabar to spread and share his personal experience of the expression of love of Jesus. He came to this spiritual destination, India, after receiving many divine messages and holy visitations. He was recognized as a spiritual master and four eminent Brahmins became his first followers. They were highly respected and were given the high-class privilege to eat off two banana leaves. In every way, the Christians of Kerala followed their rituals and traditions. They were Christians only by faith. Local Christian girls performed the traditional Margamkali, celebrating the arrival of St. Thomas in Kerala. Kerala's Christian population is 22%, together with the government and other religious groups. In 1990, Kerala became the leading state in India in education to have achieved 100% literacy. This is recorded in the Guinness Book of Records. They are known to be one of the strongest Christian communities in the world, and their faith is happily commonplace. Christianity had spread to Goa nearly 1,500 years after St. Thomas's arrival with vastly different traditions. The first European to discover the sea route to India was Vasco da Gama. This brave adventurer lies buried in St. Francis Church, Cochin, in India. Vibrant trade started between Europe and India, which had far-reaching social and religious consequences. The Europeans coveted India either to prosper by it or to conquer it. In 1517, the Portuguese captured power in Goa. They had come earlier as traders and now with a zeal of evangelists to spread the Christian faith. Thousands of local Goans came under the fold of Christianity. St. Francis Xavier, unlike the Portuguese, carried no sword, but a heart full of love. He labored and asked for no reward, except to do the will of the beloved Lord and Master. With the ethos to give without counting the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds to toil without seeking rest. A saint who has exalted Goa by being enshrined in the 17th century church of Bom Jesus, dedicated to St. Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuit order. The relics of St. Francis are enshrined here in an intricate casket designed by a Florentine jeweler. The body is 400 years old and is considered miraculous for having defied decay. 
An estimated 2 million devout followers and visitors will visit Goa in 2004, when St. Francis's sacred relics are displayed during an exposition, which takes place every 10 years. St. Francis Xavier is the lifeline of the 30% strong Catholic community of Goa. The devout church-going Christian community is naturally blessed with an exuberant spirit of mind and heart. The cha-cha-cha is as popular today as it was a hundred years ago. Here is a charming old world Goan household in the Portuguese style which takes the breath away. No evening is complete without a lengthy discussion on the lengthy family names. There will be so many Richards, there will be so many, uh, whatever names you name them, there are so many of them. At that time, you had like my name, is, you will not be able to pronounce it. The Cosme Plus is the Ricardo. Good gracious name. Yeah. <laughs> it's a name. I've got a much longer one. Yeah. Lord, what's your good name? I've got Tal, Renat, Luis, Oliveira. <laughs> Only state in India yeah, that has yeah. that, that, that 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 You <laughs> might be a Hindu, a Catholic, or a Muslim, but you know, the, 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 we all follow the same laws. In every, in every, in fact, my inheritance, divorce, inheritance, divorce, divorce marriage, everything. succession. The Goans, blessed with a receptive spirit, have over the ages freely imbibed Portuguese and Far Eastern influences, as is evident in the dance with their very own ethnic song and music. Its grace, liveliness, and uplifting music is, however, typically Goan. The Goan churches of the 17th century are in the stunning Baroque style of architecture. The British, like the Portuguese, came as traders, but later ruled the country. In 1877, Queen Victoria became the Empress of India. The missionaries now came in officially and fanned their missionary work in health, education, and social service to the different parts of India. And the work has continued after independence. Christianity came to India's northeastern region just 125 years ago. Nagaland, one of the northeastern states, is a land of sublime natural beauty. It was home to headhunters who worshipped natural deities, which they found in every blade of grass, every flower, and every living thing. This changed when the spirit of Jesus that E.W. Clark preached converted the hearts and minds of the tribesmen. Today, the Nagas are leading a life at par with the rest of the mainstream modern India. An emphasis on educational progress has brought about 100% literacy in the state. As Christianity began to spread in India, it also generated vortices of faith and grace where miracles occurred. 
The Basilica Shrine of Our Lady of Health in Belangkani in Tamil Nadu is a major Christian pilgrimage site, also called the Lourdes of the East. Miraculous cures of the sick are behind the spectacular popularity of this pilgrimage town, thronged by people of all faiths. Legend has it that in the 16th century, a young lame boy selling buttermilk was graced by a miraculous visitation from a radiant woman bearing a lovely child in her arms. Struck by the glow on their faces, the boy gave the lady a glass of buttermilk for the baby. The lady then healed his infirmity, much to his astonished gratitude. Pilgrims bring symbolic amulets of the afflicted parts made of wax or cast metal and leave it for healing and bring models of wishes to be granted, for example, a child or for marriage, etc. With a wish fulfilled comes the thanksgiving through letters and offerings of replicas. Here we see the Indian tradition of shaving the head has been incorporated into the church's thanksgiving rituals. The Divine Retreat Center at Porta, Kerala, is another place that attracts people from all over the world looking for spiritual solace and the healing of body, mind and soul. Retreats are conducted every week, attended by an average of 10,000 people wishing to experience transformation in their lives. Families leave their mentally ill at Porta knowing that they are in the care of God. I am a baby. Yeah, how In English. English? English? I am a baby. Through occupational therapy, medication, love and inspirational music, many get well and leave, and some stay back to serve. The sick and the infirm receive inspirational talks and prayers in the dormitories through the Porta TV network. These mass confessions help people to unburden their hearts and souls, a great healing in itself. And a kitchen almost half a kilometer long is testimony to the number of people Porta feeds. A portrait of love by the renowned Indian artist Emma Hussain. To the world, Mother Teresa is a saint. To us Indians, she's just our mother. The order that she justly made famous, the Sisters of Charity, runs a network of orphanages, old people's homes, shelters for the sick and the destitute, where society's most vulnerable sections are looked after with love, compassion, and tenderness. The compassionate Christian spirit is behind Shanti Avedna, the country's first hospice for the terminally sick cancer patients. The unconditional love, care and devotion of the sisters is the very face of divinity. And where there is love, there is no pain. The care and concern for the aged has been an age-old Christian value. Though only 2.5% of the population, it is estimated that Christians account for 25% of the total amount of social work conducted in India. Christianity is responsible for greatly increased prominence and liberalization of education in India. 
It lit the lamp of modern education, especially for women, giving them courage to transcend all boundaries. At Sophia's College, Bombay, the students enact a dance symbolic of a girl's courage, raising her to the level of a goddess. The Christians run nearly 17,000 schools uh, in India today, and some of them of excellent quality, as well as about 400 colleges. At the same time, Christian education had a tremendous appeal to the nationally awakened intellectual who saw in Christ the source of universal humanism. This is the SPJ Sadhana School for the Development of Multiple Handicapped Children. Run by the Society of Sacred Hearts, Province of India, the school's commitment and dedication in developing the potential of these students, some with IQs as low as 50, has met with remarkable success. I am busy in uh, typing uh, our uh, yearly school magazine, Sadhana Times. There is a growing trend in Indian Christianity to trace the spiritual wisdom through other faiths. This tranquil ashram and many others like it have become retreats for seekers of all religions. A natural sequence to strengthen one's faith and national identity through spirituality. India is at the very frontier of space progress. Interestingly, the President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, in a recent parliamentary address to the nation, thanked the Bishop of Tumba, Kerala, who had donated this church in 1963 to initiate the space program of India. Indian Christianity has played an active role in the development of the nation. Contribution in social sectors, political, economic, and sporting spheres has been noteworthy. The success of the film Amar Akbar Antony, based on national unity, is but a reflection of the multi-faith India. The driving spirit of Indian Christian community has been to heal, to give without counting the cost, to fight without heeding the wounds, to toil without seeking rest. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great as creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them, Lord God made them, made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, he made their glowing colors. He 